like uh, one thing i would like to tell you uh, just remember one thing you don't have to you don't uh, sorry this is the call from amazon security department okay we will going to uh, we are going to connect you okay once you got connected with us i'm going to transfer okay okay just simply hung up the phone okay because uh, after this phone will be hung up the amount is going to be deducted and uh, like uh, I, I can hear like your wife is like laughing from behind okay once the money will be deducted i will put the i will put my in her mouth okay yeah 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 once the money will be deducted the one who is laughing behind you i will put my over her mouth mother the scammer you just watched is getting pissed off is in a call center in india with about 10 other guys out of these 10 machines i have taken remote access of nine of them with the help of social engineering and spreading my access across their network first let's take a quick look at this social engineering should i click on cancel or no, 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 click on accept. Click on accept. Yeah, I clicked on accept. Let's give it a second. It says... Uh... Okay, do one thing. Simply uh, click on all the boxes. Do you see below the permissions, all the boxes over there? Below the permission. Oh, yeah, okay. Hey, uh, oh. you want me to use capitals or... Hello? Hello? Yep, he's gone. I got him. First thing I did once I got this initial connection was running a scan on the network of the scammers to find vulnerabilities. This call center was very outdated when it comes to software, which meant that I was able to spread to 90% of the computers in the call center. I downloaded all of the files from the machines that I got access to and found some interesting files on there. On the first PC, there was an XLSX file, which is a spreadsheets file that was called 10k Ashish. The name of the file is exactly what the file is. There's a list with information of 10k or 10,000 potential victims including their phone number first name last name address city state postal code and their email address and then almost all of the scammers had txt files notepad files on their computer with victim information when they are talking to victims or the victims are filling out the refund form the scammers type along noting down stuff like their date of birth their phone number etc what you see on the screen right now is all of the data that was in these notepad files i counted everything and this is all that it included this is pretty scary when you look at it of course i was also interested to see where the scammers were based and as you can see from this ip address lookup web page it shows us that the geolocation of the scammers is in Kolkata. A quick GPS coordinate scan on a reverse proxy of the scammers network confirms this location. Now, what scam do these guys actually run? Let's take a look at the start of a call to see how they see themselves. Yeah, thank you being connected with the premium support. This is Ragnar from the cancellation department. How are you doing today, madam? All right, you want to cancel the services, right? So for that, you have to just be in front of a computer that ca that I can provide you the cancellation form, right, madam? Madam, uh, like we are going to provide you the online cancellation form, right? You can get the cancellation form only in your computer or laptop, okay? And after the cancellation has been done, you will get your refund money, right? Uh, are you in front of your computer now? So they are running a typical tech support refund scam where they will send out voicemails and emails telling people that their antivirus has expired and that they will get a refund for that. Once on the call with the scammers, they take remote access of the victim's computer, make the victims fill out a refund form and make them log into their bank, manipulate the bank account to make it seem like they refunded too much money and force the victim to pay this money back in the form of gift cards. When the victim doesn't want to get gift cards, they also have the option to pay through wire or send money in a box to a money mule, which you probably have seen from Mark Rober and Jim Browning. Now let's see how these scammers do when they actually get a victim. Let's see this scam in practice. And do you see this desk? This desk and there's a nine digit numbers do you see it says set password for unattended access and the blue box remote desk no no i'm sorry love i'm sorry okay you have to open that page where it says this desk okay yeah the nine digit numbers the scammer makes his old lady set a password for unattended access so he can log into her computer whenever he feels like it. He also makes the victim install the program so he can blacken out a screen with any desk's built-in privacy mode and this way any desk will also run whenever the computer starts up. This way the scammer can spy on the victim whenever he feels like it. Seems like the scammers in this call center got instructed to do this because I saw all of them using this method forcing the victim to install the program and to set a password and I also caught them spying on their victims 
over a dozen times. In this instance, we can see the scammer sniffing around in a victim's banking page. And after he realizes that he cannot send himself money through the online banking page, he decides to casually watch the victim's webcam. If you think this is bad, then just wait. In this next instance, the scammer goes even further. He goes onto a victim's computer, blackens out her screen, and tries to purchase himself some gift cards through the old lady's credit card that is attached to her Amazon account. Luckily, this lady knew something wasn't right and turned off the computer. And every time a victim did not realize this, that something was wrong or they weren't there to kind of see what was going on, I always tried to look for their personal information or I called their family members to warn them. Let's listen in to one of these calls with the victims. Oh, what? Oh, you're talking about the number I called, the ones I talked to? Yeah, the one that's on your computer. How did you get that number on your computer that somebody put when I your... When I purchased my security last year, he that came up after I we got everything situated and I was um I paid one hundred and fifty nine dollars for one year protection. I don't want to stress you out or anything, but those guys were probably scammers as well. I'm not sure, oh. but I'm I'm pretty sure they were, man. Yep, yep. I believe it now because what happened last year, I clicked on it, all hell broke loose, bells went off, alarms yeah. went off. Fake fire message, I, yeah. huh? Yeah. Some fire's message that said something like a spyware alert and then a Microsoft yeah. number, yeah. Uh huh. So this guy had already been scammed. I'm not sure if it was from the same scammers and they still had his AnyDesk ID and password from last year, or this guy was just very unlucky and he got targeted twice. And then there's one last instance. This is the most popular one that the scammers like to use. I'd never actually heard this before since I started scam baiting, but apparently there is something called Zella Pay, and this is where you can pay people that you trust through your banking page without any confirmation through your phone or any CVV numbers. Scammers really love this of course because they don't need to go through any security checks or verification checks and they can just make themselves a trusted person when the victim leaves their computer on and leaves it unattended. We can see that from the victim's Zella account $500 has been sent to a guy with the name Rafael Caballero and this was on the exact same date the scammers were sniffing around on the victim's computer so I'm sure that the scammers did this. They were also trying to send more money but I'm not sure if this worked out. I tried to reach out to the victim, I called all of his family members, but nobody picked up. I did leave some voicemails though at some family members their phone number, so I hope that these guys reach out to me or they reach out to other people for help. After stealing that money from him, they still decided to watch his webcam while his screen was blackened out. He did shut off his computer, but after this I have still seen the scammer spying on this exact victim, so he hasn't realized that something is wrong. Now let's go back to the scam with the old lady. After making her fill out the password for the unattended access and making her install any desk, the scammer takes her to a refund form. So long for a moment. Once you once you receive any forms by your end, you have to let me know, okay? Yes, Eric, I got the form, okay? You will be getting the form by your end, okay? Now you have to fill this form by yourself, okay? This specific form was hosted by Microserver Bot and I reported the form to them. Before this, they were using a different web page to host their form, which was JetForm, and I also reported that form and they emailed me back in less than 24 hours saying that they took down the form and they even banned the scammers their IP address so there's no way for them to make any other forms. When the victim has finished filling out the form, the scammers will tell the victim to go log into their banking page and they have to accept the payment. There will be a pop-up apparently in their banking page that will say accept or decline the payment okay ma'am now what ma'am you there yep ma'am listen to me okay what you got you have to read it out to me yep what you need to do ma'am right we have to give you the refund on your account okay you have to go and check the statement and accept the payments from the money has been credited in your account which is 399 dollars right so what do you need to do you have to log into your ban and accept the payment okay this victim actually ended up logging into her bank account but when the scammers blackened her screen she wasn't having it and she hung up the phone and shut down her computer when the victims don't do what the scammer says they don't really like that what happened hello <laughs> बहुत नहीं बहुत ज़्यादा हरामी है
Of course, the scammer always can go one step further than just cussing out the victim because when they are still connected to the victim and the victim does not comply, they will try to lock the victim's computer by putting a system password on there and then taking the machine for ransom. I couldn't step in with this because that would be way too noisy and the scammers would know that I had remote access to their machines, but I did end up connecting to the victim's computer because I had their AnyDesk ID and the password and I left her a little note that you can see on the screen right now. I never actually heard back from her, but I'm pretty sure that this should help her i saved the file to her desktop as well and put it in the middle of her screen so i'm sure that she read all this now what actually happens when the scammer successfully convinced someone that they refunded too much money and that they need to get that money back from the victim for the next footage i'm going to show you we are dealing with a 70 year old lady from ohio that has a macbook i did not follow this scam but when i turned on my virtual machine i joined in the middle of this scam the woman had already been to target and had bought two gift cards worth of 500 dollars each for the scammers and she was on her way to Best Buy to get even more gift cards. Okay, just wait, just wait. First of all, you need to talk to me. Okay, what you need to do exactly in the Best Buy, you need to tell to the store people, I need to buy a Best Buy gift card, okay? Worth of $500, you need to buy two gift cards. And uh, first of all, you need to tell them, like, I will pay this money for a check, okay? I will write it down a check. All right, so you can simply write it down a check uh, with your bank, Edward Bank, and don't discuss anything like I can call up, uh, like I call up to the bank and I turn everything uh, to the best bank, okay? Don't, don't like tell anything what I say to you, okay? Okay, come back and talk to me, okay? And try to donate, okay? Try to donate. Unfortunately, because I just came in the middle of the scam, I didn't know anything about the victim. That was until the scammer started snooping around her files. He started messing with her MacBook, which is what you see on the screen right now. From one of these files, I could see like an email or something and her full name was in there. So I tried to look for her number. I called her many times, but she didn't pick up the phone. I called a bunch of family members of her, but they didn't pick up either. So I was kind of clueless of what to do. On top of this, while she was in the Best Buy getting those gift cards not only was the scammer messing around with her files he also tried to purchase even more gift cards from her amazon account with a credit card that was attached to her account the scammer literally knew everything about her he knew her passwords he knew her social security number he knew what her credit card information was and he just knew everything about this woman she had given everything away when the scammer was trying to purchase these gift cards i couldn't resist but to shut off the victim's computer usually i don't step in like this because it's way too noisy and the scammers will know that i have hacked them but i couldn't stand watching this and not doing anything. After I shut the computer down, the scammer thinks somebody in the home of the woman actually shut down the computer, so I was in the clear. After this incident, the scammer tried to see how much money was on the target gift cards the victim had bought for him. I could also see the gift card numbers and codes that he was typing on his computer and I took screenshots of these numbers. I sent these screenshots to a friend of mine on Discord and he has contacts within Target and in less than 3 minutes they blocked the cards for me. The scammer thought that the woman had been scammed by Target and told her to leave Best Buy and go back to Target to get new cards from there. When he sent her back to this Target, I decided to call Target and warn them that somebody was being scammed and the person that was in the store and that took my call wasn't really cooperative with me service this is megan how can i help you yes hello megan you're speaking with james boiler i'm a scam investigator and i just wanted to warn you guys that somebody is coming to your store in Elyria, ohio to buy gift cards for scammers uh, i don't know if you are in the store but i would like want to ask you if you could maybe warn that person that is coming to your store that they are being scammed because i cannot reach them on their phone because the scammers are occupying the line. Okay, thank you. Okay, so do you need me to like describe what she looks like, what her name is, or...? No, all my team knows what to look out for. Well, she already bought gift cards and they didn't like warn her or anything, so I, I just wanted to let you know well, that we she's... Have a, we have messages all over the registers. Yeah, but you have to understand that these scammers are very good at social engineering uh, and they convince the victims. She already bought gift cards at your store, so clearly your warnings aren't working. I just wanted to warn you that she's coming back to get more gift cards. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we deny a guest from purchasing something. We can only have the signs displayed and try and talk them out of purchasing the gift card. So we're doing everything on our part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If she comes in the store, uh, her name is Brenda, she tries to buy gift cards, can you please tell her 
that she's being scammed to hang up the phone with those guys? Yes. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Have a nice day. Bye bye. After this, it seemed like the victim didn't go to Target. Uh, she went back home, and the scammer told her that he was going to call her back tomorrow. The scammer hung up the phone with the victim with the plan to call her tomorrow and scam even more money out of her and this was the perfect opportunity for me to call the victim and warn her but I didn't have a phone number so I decided to do something that kind of goes against my morals and I connected to her computer with her AnyDesk ID and password again without her knowledge. While she was browsing on her safari I typed a message for her with my phone number and I needed to talk to her. As you can see she wasn't very happy with this understandably she was confused and she shut down her computer computer and didn't call me. 20 minutes later I could see her computer was back up and I decided to just do it again. I had to do anything to save this woman and I told her later that I was sorry for just connecting to her computer like this but I really wanted to get to her. I even blocked her input so she couldn't shut off the computer again and she had to call me and luckily she did. Hello? Yeah, you're speaking with James Boiler. This what? I'm a scam investigator. Is this Brenda? Yes. How do I know you're a scam investigator? Yeah, I can show you my YouTube channel if you want me to. Um, I've just been following along the whole day, but I couldn't reach you for some reason. I couldn't find your number anywhere. The guys you were talking to are scammers from India, and I just felt really bad that they were trying to steal money from you. I just wanted to let you know, like, please, please don't pick up any calls, don't buy them any gift cards, because they're trying to steal money from you, okay? Isn't everybody? Yeah. I mean, you've got control of my computer now. Yeah, I'm really sorry about that. It's just the only way I could reach you. I, I, I don't know. I didn't know what else to do, you know, so. I then went on to explain to her who I was by showing her my YouTube channel. And I also told her that I had been following along with the scam the whole day that I've been trying to reach her and that I was the one that blocked the target cards and that's why the balance was zero. Let's take a look. You see that? That's the uh, same voice. It sounds like you, but I'm sorry. I don't know what to believe anymore. Yeah, no, I understand. I, I, like, if you want me to, I can explain how their scam works. And I then went on to remove the password from her AnyDesk so the scammers couldn't connect to her computer anymore. And whilst doing this, the scammer tried calling her and tried to connect to her computer again. Hmm, all right, yeah. I think, I'm sorry. I yeah, no, that's, that's not an issue. Oh, they're tr I think they're trying to connect right now, you see? it's They're trying to connect 228. Like, they're trying to access your machine right now. If they call you, they're, they're gonna try to convince you that you are wrong. I then took her to a web page to explain how this can work and she recognized everything the scammers did. So then she fully trusted me that I was the good person and those guys were actually scammers. And then uh, it says the overpayment, the man. So yeah, we paid you too much, man. We need to get that money back. I'm gonna lose my job. You need to get me gift cards. That was the way it went. If you wanna watch a video on it, it's just uh, another YouTuber. He does the same thing as me. His name is uh, Jim Browning. After this, she revealed to me that she had also bought gift cards the day before from Walmart she bought them $500 in Best Buy gift cards as well. I know yesterday uh, got a Walmart card. I think that was $500. Did you buy that for I, them? Yes. It showed zero balance also. Target said that it shows zero balance. I'm thinking to myself, is he going in there and cashing those out kind yeah. of? and then no. having me go back, so no. I'm getting money to buy more. After this, I instructed her what to do, if the scammers would ever call her back, what to say, and I told her that her computer was safe now, she could use it without the scammers actually connecting to her unwillingly, and after doing all this, we said our goodbyes. All right, thank you so much. All right, I'm gonna disconnect now, uh, and then, right. yeah, if you have any questions, okay. you can call me, so yeah. Okay, thank you, you have all a right. good day. Yeah, have a nice day as well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Some of you guys might have already noticed that on the scammers their calling device from Ring Central, an American company is displayed as the team's name. When I first saw this, I started doing some research into this company name and I came across an article on scammer.info from Aussie Scambuster. He posted this article on September 18th of 2020 and he wrote about how a Gregory owned several different scam web pages and that his wife, Shirley also owned several different scammer numbers and web pages as well. I then went on Gregory's company webpage, gregorysquad.com, where it says he is into renovating homes. There's also a picture of Gregory there, and that is the same guy that appears in a mugshot of a news article that says he ignited a bucket bomb at his landlord's home, and he went to prison for that offense for several years. I'm sure Gregory is involved with this call center, and that the scammers are abusing his LLC to get a license from Ring Central so they can call victims abusing this phone system. I reported this operation 
Turing Central so that the scammers that didn't get destroyed cannot continue their scam and that the ones destroyed and that will return cannot get back to scamming once they reset the computers. Turing Central replied on Twitter within an hour saying they were sharing this information with their fraud team and after 18 hours I asked them for an update and they told me that they had shut down the scammers their campaign. The scammers that didn't get destroyed that I still had access to are after a week now continuing their scams on iBeam. I will make another video on this call center and will keep destroying them until they reset all the computers in the call center to a fresh Windows version with an antivirus software on there. If you don't want to miss this then make sure you subscribe because I have some very good ideas with these guys. I wanted to ask Gregory a few questions and tried to call him on several different numbers on several different occasions but he never picked up. On one occasion though when I called his company number Gregory didn't pick up but somebody from India did. It was some random Indian dude he didn't say a word to me but this confirms that Gregory has contacts within India. Hello? Sir, very professional for a business number. Unfortunately, I could not confront Gregory, so then it was time for me to confront the scammers in Gregory's call center. For this, I didn't do it myself, but I got my buddy Vladimir, number one Russian hacker. He is going to destroy this entire call center. Hello, guys. Thanks for getting connected with me in support. This is David. How may I help you today? Um, yeah, I got a missed call from this number. You got a missed call from this number. Yes, this is all about your premium support subscription for your computer security and services. We are simply going to provide you with an online cancellation form on your computer. Now, now just type in over there, W w w like three w's yes uh, you see any desk anywhere anytime and any desk and just below that can you see there is an option like download now y um, yeah yeah you give a click on that set password for unattended access give a click on all positive options okay like accept allow give a click on all positive options okay madam just hold for a while hold on hold on hello madam Hello. Yeah, uh, why are you uh, trying to do something to my mother? So, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? I am number one Russian, okay? Number one Russian hacker, Vladimir. Why are you trying to scam my mother? Are you f***ing stupid or what? Are you f***ing dumb in the f***ing head or what? Hey, can you talk or not? You have a mouth? You can talk or not? Hey, you mess with the wrong person, bro. I'm going to hack your computer if you don't talk to me right now. I'm going to hack your computer. Talk to me now. You have five seconds to talk to me. I give you five seconds. Yeah, mother f Why are you trying to scam my mother? Do you know who I am or not? I am not trying to scam her. I'm trying to fuck her. Do you, do you know that? Do you know who I am? I am going to hack your entire call center. I'm fucking her mother as well as your sister at the same time. Do you? Who are you talking to? Do you know who you're talking to? As you could see, the scammer was not really talkative, he was not planning on giving me any more content and didn't say a lot of words. So after this, I decided it was time for me to destroy his entire call center to see if he maybe would like to talk to me once I got control over his entire call center. Hey scammer, you cannot run away from me, okay? This is Vladimir, number one Russian hacker, and you better start talking to me, bro. Because if you don't talk to me, I'm gonna hack your whole call center. Do you hear me or not? Hey scammer! Hey scammer, I know you can hear me. This is Vladimir. Vladimir, number one Russian hacker, and you cast out my mother. And that's the biggest mistake of your life. That was the biggest mistake, okay? And for that, you're gonna get punished. If you answer some questions for me, I will leave you alone, and I will give you your computer back, okay? Yes, I am hacker. I am hacker, yes. Do you want to answer a few questions for me or not? Okay, you don't want to talk to me? Then you're gonna pay for it, okay? You're gonna pay for it, my friend. Just wait. Give me one second, just wait. Bow. You are done for, bro. You are done for, okay? You don't want to talk to me? This is what happened. This is what happened when you don't want to talk to me. 
This is exactly what happens when you don't want to talk to me, okay? Yeah, system hack, system hack. This is Vladimir. This is Vladimir number one Russian hacker. Hey! Hey, scammer! Hey, scammer! Hey, scammer, you wanna talk to me for one second or not? <laughs> They're all shutting down. Oh my god. Hey, scammers! Hey, scammers! I know you can hear me! You can talk to me! You can talk to me for one second! Alright, <laughs> they don't want to give me any content, boys, so <laughs> at least we shut them down. Uh, yeah, if they're gonna restart their PC is gone, it's full of malware, so they're all done for. Oh man, it's yeah, it's a shame they didn't want to talk to me, like, none of them said a word to me, they were just shouting system, system. Oh, oh my god, man. Alright guys, that's it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed, even though they didn't give off a very strong reaction, we could still hear their panic, which was pretty nice. These scammers got shot down, not all of the computers that I had got shot down, as you guys might have noticed, I didn't destroy all 10 computers, but this is so that I can respread once they reset the computers, because this didn't really destroy them for good, you know, if I destroy them with malware, they can just reset the computers, so I'm just gonna spread back to them, and make more videos on them, until they reset every single PC in the call center. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed anyways, if you did, make sure to leave a like, and a comment for the algorithm if you want to support my work financially my patreon link is always in the description i also have a twitter and a discord which you both can check out the links for that are also in the description hey, yeah man i hope you guys have a nice day stay safe stay cautious bye bye